Hello everyone! Today I'm, I'm doing something new and pretty different for this channel. For the first time ever I'm actually interviewing someone. No group discussion, no set topic, just questions and answers. And who is it? Well, if you guys have seen any of my videos, a large amount of them are actually related to this one person in some way. So I'd like to introduce the co-founder, co-writer, and editor of Dragon Ball Z Abridged, the Team 4 star member, Scott Ferrix, also known as Kaiser Echo. Hi so, there! Kaiser, how, oh. how are you doing today? I'm good, how are you doing? Oh, no, I'm doing good. Kind of a bit... I'm, I'm excited to do this. It's very nice to... I don't know. It's just been really, really great to have you on here. Like I was just saying before, like kind of because Dragon Ball Z abridged essentially got me into Dragon Ball Z and that essentially got me into YouTube. So kind of like basically the reason why this video basically exists is pretty much because of you. So it, it's pretty, but it's pretty, pretty cool. It kind of just feels like everything's coming full circle, at least in terms of me. So I'm really happy that it, I'm really happy that we could be so influential for you, and that we could inspire you to make your own content. That's really great. I, I love hearing that from people. Like beyond just you know them getting into Dragon Ball, which that always makes me happy because I'm actually a very big Dragon Ball fan. If you didn't know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I think like just I was just thinking about it like the first thing I kind of want to ask you I think the thing that's on everyone's mind still kind of is Broly. Uh, did we do that movie? I think you did that movie. I might have. We might have done that movie. I think we did. You you actually did when Broly. So like how, how do you how do you feel about that? Like like are you are you pleased? Just relieved that it's over. Um, Not looking forward to that. Got to do the next two Broly movies, which aren't as good. <laughs> Funny enough, I'm actually a bundle of different emotions. On one hand, I'm super happy that it's finished. On the other hand, I feel like we could have done better. But when it comes down to it, people enjoy what we put out there. There were a lot of really good jokes for folks. And so I guess in the end, we went out. Um, but there are parts of me that I can't escape that I kind of wish we could have done more, uh, said more. But the truth is, we languished with that movie. It was a difficult process trying to find out what we were going to do with certain characters, certain scenes, making it say something and be funny. Really, in the long run, it I'm just I am really just glad that it's over. It was kind of a nightmare if I had to be completely honest. I mean, we still enjoyed making it for the most part, but oh, I've never had more difficulty editing a movie or scripting a movie. Oh, yeah, because, like, I, I remember sort of, like, you know, while you guys, like, while you were editing it specifically, and you were just, like, kept, like, commenting things on Twitter, and I was, I think everyone was just kind of like, you know, K Kaiser, uh, are you all right? Is the movie treating you okay? Do we need to go and give it harsh words about making the footage a bit nicer for you? No, 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 the movie, the movie was good. No, no, it, it, it was, it's hard on me, but it loves me. It, 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 it wants, it wants me, it wants me to just be a better editor, that's all. Because, I mean, the thing about Broly is, like, he's just such a kind of big landmark of like the fan base in general and I like before you did it I was always thinking that no matter what you did someone was going to get pissed off because Broly wasn't accurate to what they wanted Broly to be like. like like did you did you ever feel like you had to represent him in a certain way or did you just not care at all um we really threw everybody's expectations right out the window we picked them up and chucked them and hope we didn't hit anybody on the ground floor because the fact of the matter is we don't want anybody else to tell us or inform us about how, what we should do with these characters because that doesn't mean anything to us. We want these characters to be represented the way that we want to do it. We want our jokes to be the jokes that we want to make because when it comes, when it comes down to brass tacks, we don't want to borrow jokes from people. We don't want to steal jokes from people. We, don't, we want to defy people's expectations. Like, we're not Miyazaki, but he Miyazaki did inspire, like, there isn't, Miyazaki quote that inspires me to this day, which is, take people's expectations and deny them. Isn't that kind of what Akira Toriyama says as well? Oh yeah, no, Toriyama, Toriyama is all about de uh, trying to deny expectations, going, like, he doesn't like to repeat stuff if he can avoid it, um, he's always trying to do something new, um, and yeah, that's, I don't like the, I, 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 a lot of people are like, oh, you know, Brit, you know, he should speak with a proper British accent. You know, he should be, I, he should be that. I did hear a lot of Tilo those comments, yeah. Very intelligent. Oh, I'm Broly. Good to meet you. Because that'd be funny, you know, because he's a big meathead. But that's obvious. <laughs> when, when it came down to it, we wanted to represent the character for what it was and what it meant. Um, 
and not just change it up in a way that, again, people were going to see coming. We actually had a ton of ideas that, that we had to scrap. Like, we were going to do more and say more. But at the end of the day, the footage just wasn't allow allowing for it. And so we just had to give it up. What we ended up with, again, I feel like we could have done more. But I am happy that people enjoyed it. And even if people don't like it, I mean, Broly's not over. You you still do have two more movies that have him in it. So, oh, yeah. Thank you, know. you for reminding me. I mean, like, <laughs> I'm going to be as bad. I mean, the movies aren't as long, right? The other two? Um, I guess. I, yeah, they're not as long. Um, I, I won't lie. They're probably actually going to be the, some of the shortest movies we've ever made. <laughs> um, it, it, in fact, it's quite possible that we might double feature 10 and 11, but we'll see when we get there. That would be interesting. Huh. All right. So next question. I, I think I, I sort of kind of know this, but I just wanted to hear it like properly. So how did you like become a Dragon Ball fan? Um, and actually, it comes from a time when I was a child watching Toonami. Uh, well, actually, it was before Toonami. Um, we have a network out here called UPN. Um, and in California, Dragon Ball was airing at like 7 in the morning on Saturday on this on this syndicated network like it really was it was just it was only on tv in a couple of different states in the united states and i just happened to catch it and i really liked it i thought it was really cool um and it was getting more and more popular as time was going on uh then it started showing on tsunami and then it got a big fan base uh alongside the likes of sailor moon um and i i you know i i dragon ball wasn't actually my first anime necessarily it was actually voltron um okay yep so you know i watched voltron then i watched sailor moon then i watched dragon ball and then everything opened up and i really became a fan when i started looking it up online like all the different facets of dragon ball i grew up with the japanese version because of that too because the english version barely had any episodes out so i ended up watching japanese subs clips online i actually bought a fan subbed vhs of the broly movie um, then I started watching it on the International Channel, which is another channel we have out here, that was, show that was showing the episodes raw, no subs, just raw episodes of Dragon Ball Z. Hmm. Was it hard to figure out what was going on from there, or um, you know, just... I, I obviously couldn't understand the language, but a lot of the things that happen in Dragon Ball are pretty self-explanatory. Um, mm, true. You, know, you don't pick up on a lot of the finer details, but I uh, learned my first Japanese word, which was baka. <laughs> um, which, you know, I was watching that and I'm like, he just called him an idiot. That was, I was like, that was an insult. And I looked it up and I'm like, yep, it was an insult. Oh, first Japanese lessons, watching Dragon Ball Raw. Fair enough, fair enough. Um, I, oh, and I also bought the uh, original Pioneer movie DVDs because they were the best. <laughs> oh yeah, I've, I've heard good things about them. All right, so um, next question. Also, I kind of sort of know the answer, just sort of want to hear this. So how did Team Four Star start? Oh boy, um, you know I've, uh, I've I've answered this question a lot, and so I've gotten I've I've been able to abridge it down to a very concise answer. All right. Um, back in the day, uh, Martin Little Karibo Bellamy was making Yu-Gi-Oh yeah. abridged, which he did the same thing with Yu-Gi-Oh that we do with Dragon Ball, only a little bit more comedy based, like purely comedy, none of the drama that we do. Um, and he inspired myself. Nick Lanny Pator Landis and Curtis Takahata One Arnot and Mas uh, Lawrence Mosco X Simpson. Uh, and they were doing their own abridged series, and I was doing mine. I was doing Loop on the Third abridged while uh, Curtis was doing G Gundam, Nick was doing Yu Yu Hawk Show, and Mas uh, Lawrence was doing Not a Tale Abridged. So basically, I got to know those guys because they started watching my show. I talked with them. Lawrence and Nick were already doing the movies with another person uh, known as Vegeta3986 or uh, Brandon. Yep. Um, and I was like, and, and then Curtis uh, Taka, he was all, you know, if you weren't doing Lupin, what series would you do? And I'm like, oh, well, obviously I'd be doing Dragon Ball. In fact, I'd be doing Dragon Ball right now if it weren't for the fact that the cast is too big. And he's like, well, I mean... I mean, Lawrence and Mosco are, or Lawrence and Nick are already doing it. I'm like, yeah, but they're busy and they're cooler than I am. And the next thing I knew, some conversations happened, and turns out that turned out that yeah, no, they wanted to do the show. 
Um, but we all knew it was going to be a really, really big undertaking. Um, so Nick basically agreed only if he got to both play Vegeta and be a writer. And I was like, fine, done. You're in. And, uh, you know, nine years later, here we are. Oh, God, nine years. Because that, that kind of leads on me into my next question. Because, like, you know, from the start of Dragon Ball Z Bridge, like, you know, I've watched, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge. I've watched a bit of, watched a bit of Lenny's um, Yu Yu Hakusho and things like that. Like, but from the very start of Dragon Ball Z Bridge, it, it felt like it just kind of had a, a bit more production value than any of the others. Like, you know, you had... You had a whole bunch of different voice actors from like other actual abridged series putting them together, and you had quite a lot more editing and stuff. So like 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 when you started Dragon Ball Z abridged, were you consciously trying to make it like the best abridged series, or did that just kind of happen accidentally? Um, well, I would argue it hasn't happened. I think there are some <laughs> people out there who've got some vast, fantastic material. The Sword Art Online guys are killing it. Um, oh, they're great. M- Martin Martin is still fantastic. Um, I'd say if there's anything, we are the most ambitious and we have the best production values. I will, I will say that happily, but best, I think that's completely subjective. Um, but when we set out, yes, we had full and well the intention to make the best show we could possibly make. Um, and one of the things that Nick caught, like that caught Nick's eye is that I've got a talent for visual editing. That that's one of the things I focus really hard on. And as time went on, sound design became something that I, uh, that I spent a lot of my time on as well. Not, you know, tooting my own horn or anything, but I will respect where my talents lie. Visual and audio design are those things. I'm, I'm, I'm particularly uh, comfortable um, and proud of the progress that I've made. Um, and I think us all together, I think we are good writers. I, I do think that we can produce really good comedy if we sit down and put our minds to it. And I think that the people who voice for the show are some incredibly talented voice actors. Just incredibly. Um, I'm not going to speak much for myself there. Uh, I think that comes down to other people's interpretations. But I definitely do 100% believe that a lot of the voice actors who work on the show are incredibly talented. Um, and so over time, we definitely try to improve and improve and improve. Because all I want, all I want us to do is make the best product possible. Things are really difficult. Um... All right, things, things, how do I put it? Things, um, the bar keeps rising, so I always feel like we have to top ourselves every time. And that that's getting more and more complicated as, uh, as time goes by. I mean, I'm sure a lot of people have been really appreciating, like, you, at, at this point, like, you know, you've kind of branched out a bit almost, like, you know, in just, like, the not necessarily using the source footage or just, like, completely changing the source footage altogether. Yeah, sometimes I have to write, like, sometimes we have to animate completely new scenes. Like, um, like, uh, the, the marriage between, um, Yadrob and Corin. Uh, that was, you know, obviously new footage. Hmm. Um, because we, we wrote ourselves a storyline that we're like, we want to see that come to a, 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 not a, not a, yeah, not a conclusion, but we wanted to see it come full circle. We wanted to do you know, finish that storyline, and that required us to go pretty balls to the wall, so. I mean, I, I mean, I was particularly also thinking about, like, the ending to World Strongest, where you just completely changed absolutely everything, including the ending to the movie, and you made it sort of, you, you changed it in a way that actually kind of made natural sense, and, like, I, I thought in particular that was just very interesting, that, like, like, you know, just not just using the source footage, but actually, like, creating something completely new out of it, and actually adding your own stuff to it as well. It's it's been it's been a heck of an experience the last nine years building uh, storylines and defining characters. I'll I'll say that. So obviously, then you you guys kind of you know you put those few first few episodes out there, and I, I'm just like, how did the how did the sort of rise of Dragon Ball Z Abridged happen? Like like was it a was it like some kind of like overnight thing, or was it just like gradually more and more people found out about it? Very like, gradually. Like was there. Was there a moment where you just kind of like woke up one morning and then you realized, wow, my internet parodies actually become a really big deal? Well, it was, it was sort of interesting because we all had uh, subscribers on all of our own channels. Um, I was I was around like maybe 13,000 at my peak. Meanwhile, uh, Lanny Pator was around like 40,000, 50,000. What happened was people were aggregating to get like we ended up collecting all of our independent subscribers and just kind of pouring them into like we the funny thing was 
we were like, okay, so we're going to have to make a 9,000 subscriber video. Well, we made that in a week. Like, done. After the first episode, it was no, not even a thing. Then we had to make, like, we were also going to make, you know, a 100,000 subscriber video. And that that only took, like, maybe a year. Um, but it still never occurred to us that we were getting big until we started getting invited to conventions. And we're like, wow, conventions actually want us. And then we'd get to the conventions, and then we'd put buttons seat, butts in seats. And we're like, people are actually coming to see us at the conventions we're being invited to. Um, which is crazy for me. Like, I, I most respect to all of our fans, but it's crazy that people want to come and see me. Like, that is so weird. Uh, because I, I don't really find myself to be extraordinary. I'm, I, I'm, I'm really your average guy. Um, I've got my talents, but I've never expected my, I'm not a star. I'm not, I'm not like the kind of guy who's going to go out on stage and get the crowd riled up, I feel like. But people enjoy the material that myself and my team make. Uh, and, um, if you, although if you ever wanted to meet somebody who can go up and get a crowd riled up, oh man, let me tell you, that's, uh, that's Nick and Kurt. They're actually a treat. Um, if you ever end up co- going to a convention that we're all at, they're so much fun. I'm, I'm always happy when they're on a panel, but I know it's, it, it, it is kind of interesting to me to think that we grew and got so big out of nowhere. Uh, it, it, it was gradual because like we were gradually growing and growing and growing, but it, I don't know. It's, it's still weird for me, uh, but I'm happy and I'm, I'm happy that I'm able to do this for a living. That's the thing. And so onto the whole kind of like sort of popularity point, the, the fact that you guys are very, have become very like influential, like at, at this point, you know, in terms of, I guess, a very small niche, but still in terms of like people on YouTube who talk about Dragon Ball, you guys are, you know, the biggest without question. And not only that you're big and popular, but also it's like people legitimately often really listen to what you guys say. So like, like, do you ever feel a bit sort of like some sort of responsibility in terms of like having that so much amount of influence? Like you need to kind of maybe like educate people or just something like that. Like, I, I mean, the thing that I'm thinking about is, um, how you guys implemented the backstory for the androids into the actual series itself. Because, like, that's something that nobody would really know unless they really quickly go around and um, troll through the Kanzenshu translation archives. But that was something you put in Dragon Ball Z Abridged, and now, like, a lot of people know about it. Well, the yeah, the actually... So when it comes to uh, feeling a responsibility to inform people, um, actually a little bit. There are times where I feel a little bit bad that we said Bulma Brief because her name is not Bulma Brief. Like, that's a total misnomer. Everyone thinks that her name is Bulma Brief, and it's actually just Bulma, and the dub called her Bulma Brief because her father is actually just Dr. Brief. That's his name. He's a doctor, and his name is Brief. Um, so that's one of those things where on my Twitter, I've actually been doing a bunch of posts lately, actually. Uh, not lately, but over the last couple of years, I've been like, by the way, did you know that this is actually a dub-only thing? And, uh, you know, and we even try and use Japanese um, names and attack names. And we say Sun Goku instead of, you know, just Goku. Um, well, they, we say Sun Goku in the show. I say Goku because I'm a total weeb. Um, but, well, yeah, and everyone complains about it. And everyone complains about it. And they, can, they can keep on complaining. <laughs> I, I'm just going to sit back and be like, oh, I'm sorry. I watched Doragon Ball just to piss him off. Because I, I, I never Torang, actually... Torangsu to, to, Torangsu, to, Torangsu to Bruma to Bezita. No, no. I say, I say Son Goku because his name is Japanese. That is, that is his name. You can say Goku all you want. I'm going to say Goku. But uh, no, I, I, I do love getting to add... Like, I won't lie. I love getting to put those little details in the show that 16 scene that is a pride of mine because not only was that one of our few chances to do legitimate character writing like no no comedy just character writing for a scene but we got to inform people we got to we got to add depth to the universe that did not exist in the original version but does technically belong there so it was like it was really really nice to be able to add that in to give that extra layer to the story um because our version is not the official version so we can futz with it all we want 
Oh yeah, I'm sure. Like I don't think everyone really assumes in the actual version Napa is alive and a movie producer, but that's kind of a thing now. Do you know how often we get asked when Ghost Nap is coming back? <laughs> and I'm like, he's not a ghost <laughs> anymore. He's a bit of ghost for a se- <clears throat> Oh god. <laughs> but I mean, of, of course, on the other hand, this sort of influence can kind of go two ways. Like I, oh, yeah. I've seen kind of people talking about Dragon Ball the Abridge and also saying they don't. Some people aren't really don't really like the fact that it's almost become so predominant in talking about the series. So you know, like people, you can have a legitimate discussion about Dragon Ball, and then someone's inevitably going to quote Dragon Ball Z abridged and some kind of like crazy inverted version of Godwin's Law. Like it, it's just going to happen at some point. <laughs> and you know that's both cool and bothersome. I can agree. Um, because on one hand, it's nice to know that oh, if Dragon Ball comes up, our name's sure to follow. At the same time, it's like, okay, cool. So can we talk about the actual show now? Because, like, I want people to be able to talk about Yamcha without, like, talking about how bad we make fun of him. I want people to be able to, I mean, like, you Super know. Super kind of did that as well. <laughs> make Super did a whole making fun of Yamcha thing, so. Oh, None of that was you guys. I loved how they did it. <laughs> I, I, th- I, thought that, I thought that was lo- funny as heck. Because, like, in terms of, like, your influence, like, the, the one thing I've, I've kind of thought about and I've seen have people discuss, like, is things like sort of, like, the idea that people sort of almost use your series as a kind of, like, almost like a substitute for the original series and then just sort of, like, use your own interpretations of the characters as, like, what they were actually supposed to be. Like, in, in particular, like, the idea that, you, you know, you guys very much play up the fact that, like, Goku is an idiot and also is a bit of a bad father. Although, yeah. e- even though, like, it, it's obviously the original doesn't, at the very least, the original doesn't really talk about it in the same kind of direct way that you do when they don't especially don't go around and joke about how um goku is like abandoning gohan all the time and stuff like no, that no, no. like his his bad fatherdom is just played is what it is it's not brought up no one talks about it it's not a plot point it's just he's kind of a bad dad um and of course we're making jokes about that but if people cannot take our like and and i and you know this is me addressing the audience which i've done a few times before in other places like, our versions of these characters are not real. They're not the official versions. And and I wish people would stop kind of being like, you know, like, uh, taking them and then making them their canon. I mean, anyone can make, have their own head canon. That's fine. But keep it out of discussion about the actual show. It's kind of just rude to the original, honestly. Because our version, again, it's just fun. It's It's just comedy. Next question. So how did you end up transitioning into like professional voice acting and working with Funimation? Actually, um, it's, it's a little weird to talk about, but I guess I can kind of bring it up. Um, what happened was uh, we got to know Sabbath. Um, Christopher Sabbath, uh, the you know star of the Dragon Ball dub, um, plays Vegeta, Piccolo, uh, Shenlong, um, and a bunch of other smaller characters. Yamcha, in fact. He's basically the entire, half of the entire first dub. Yeah, there's a reason that Lanny Pator, uh is, we call him the Sabbat of Team Four Star. Uh, <laughs> he is incredibly talented, incredibly friendly, super, uh, total troll. Um, and he ended up liking our stuff, which I, I was super excited about because I really respect the man. I've always respected the man. Um, you know, except for when I was a 16 year old with opinions about the dub, but it, it, then again, <laughs> they like everyone in that dub, it already sa- has already said, Oh, that dub sucked. Whatever. Like we were, we, they were new. They were off the street. They were fresh. It's whatever. It's cool. Uh, but he got to know us. And the next thing we knew, we were getting opportunities to voice act and stuff. Um, and the first thing ever that I, uh, officially voiced that voice, uh, voice acted, voice acted for Funimation was actually through Christopher Bevins, um, who got to know me and our stuff and, and actually Helsing Ultimate abridged. Uh, and he called me and he's like, Hey, would you like to do some sides on ping pong, the animation? Um, if you, if you're not familiar with ping pong, uh, it's actually a show about characters who play ping pong and it's super, it's super good. It's like, by the way, like, let me, let me plug this and and not to my own benefit. I'm just a couple of side bits. No, watch ping pong, the animation. It's super fucking fantastic. Pardon me. Um, Sorry. You're allowed to swear. All right. Good, good. Uh, But 
Yeah, I. It, it was really just, you know, getting to know directors through the work that we had done over many years. Many years. Not, and, like, this wasn't just, like, oh, yeah, we, we hit it big overnight, and the next thing we knew, we knew, we started getting offers. No, we don't get handed roles. We don't get, like, the closest thing to getting handed a role was for, for was from Bandai Namco, uh, Bandai Namco, when they came to us and they said, hey, we'd like you guys in Dragon Ball Xenoverse. Um, and that, that was, that was fascinating. Like, that was amazing. That was incredible. Like, to be told, yeah, we want you to be a character, like, a character voice in this game. It blew my mind. Um, And we came back for Xenoverse 2, and instead of just talk, uh, Curtis, which obviously I'm still happy about, both Lanny Bator, you know, Nick Landis and I got to be in there too. Um, So, yeah, it was, it was incredible, like, that we got to be in an official piece of Dragon Ball. Right, so... Also, like, in terms of kind of the the, the future and, like, the, the current state of Team 4 stuff, because, like, obviously things have changed a lot past few years. You know, you've got, like, a Patreon, you've got a studio with people on location, like, in Dallas. So, like, how have that, how's that changed, like, the general way you're producing the series? It's actually been really beneficial to keeping the video game content going and separated from the abridged content, because the way that we sustain ourselves is not to the patreon the patreon pays for a lot of our employees um but when it comes to uh when it comes to dragon ball z abridge and all that content really that's paid for by video game uh like the let's play stuff if we didn't have that um we probably wouldn't be able to even do uh the abridge stuff not not as good as it's done now not as consistently as it's done now some people like want to complain about the video game stuff. They don't understand. We can't afford to make Dragon Ball Z abridged without that stuff. Like it, it's the only way that we're able to, you know, that we don't have to work a nine to five job. Uh, so you know, video and, and voice acting does not pay the bills. Not even close. Like it's thirty. It's it's like maybe how many hours a year that we actually get? You know. I think I got had 50 hours last year. 50 hours of Funimation wow. work. In a year. So, like, it doesn't pay the bills. Um, the studio has actually been really beneficial in helping that stuff get done, as well as uh, manage people, because we have a huge team now. We have people working on uh, Final Fantasy VII Machine Abridged, Helsing Ultimate Abridged, Dragon Ball Z Abridged. We have people working on all the gaming content. New content that I, we can't even talk to you about. Um, we're coming up with, like, we actually are looking at starting to do, uh, more anime-specific content, like news and, uh, podcasts and stuff. Uh, so th that's really exciting, too. As well as original animated content. That is coming down the pipeline now because of that studio. Um, Patreon covers that. Like, Patreon has covered the studio and paying all these employees. So it is. It has been a great boon for us. We've been able to keep Dragon Ball Z Bridge going while while our, us ourselves growing and 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 evolving and not stagnating. It's weird when people say you should just focus on the abridged stuff. Cool. So then we won't have a career. <laughs> like you just want us to stagnate and do things that only you want, and then we don't have a, a life. It, it it you know. If I sound a little bit bitter, I'm not. But I want people to understand. If any of you ever say, well, they should just focus on the abridged stuff, well, you're basically just damning us to having no future. All right, so the next question is, if you had the ability to, like, start Dragon Ball Z abridged again from the very beginning, is there anything you would change and why? Oh, my God, are you kidding? Um, yeah, a million things. We have, we have new artists, animators. I am a million times a better editor, sound designer. Um, we're all better actors and better writers. We'd change a lot of things. Like, that entire first episode would have three of its original jokes and would otherwise, otherwise just be rewritten from the ground up. Um, we'd rewrite the entire first season. The only things that we would keep would th be things that would ultimately transfer to the second season. And big jokes that obviously really hit home. Like, Mahogany, uh, Goddammit Nappa. Um, a lot of Nappa stuff would actually probably remain the same, honestly. I mean, you kind of need to. He's so omnipresent even now. Yeah, uh, funny enough, Nappa was one of those characters that we knew we had hit. Like, 
Napa, unfortunately, was the funny guy. And everyone needed to be funnier. But he was the guy who was always crack, cracking the jokes, always making the funnies. Nowadays, I know that we could write our characters to be funny all on their own. Um, especially Tension on Yamcha, Chaozu, those guys. Episode 6 is one of the weakest episodes of our show. So if I could go back, I would happily, happily rewrite the first season like, and improve on all that stuff. Make it more consistent. Give it better. Give it better art uh, in the places that needed it. I I I I I I know for certain that I could make that better. We've actually talked about it too. We've talked about you know, going back and redoing the first season, so it's possible. I mean, I'd be. I'd be I think that'd be personally really interesting. I I'd, I'd be down seeing that. It'd also be very cool, com- interesting to like just do the direct comparison, just to see how far you guys would come. <laughs> well, we'll see. All right, awesome. Next question. I, I feel like someone is going to like want me to ask you this at some point. So, thoughts on Dragon Ball Super? Um, actually, if you if anybody wants my thoughts on Dragon Ball Super, I actually did an interview with Christopher Neosi and Mike Labrie from Konzenshu EX. Uh, you can actually find that interview over on Konzenshu. Um, Wait, did I say, wait, uh, did I say Vegito EX or Consensual EX? You, you, you said Consensual EX. Uh, of... No, no. Mike Libri and Vegito EX uh, from Consensual. Um, I, yeah. You can find that interview over on the, on his website, Consensual. Uh, and it's, it, it'll, it'll give you everything you need to know about me and Dragon Ball Super. Long, long and short, though, just for the sake of this interview, I think it has problems. But its ups are really entertaining. Even though some of its lows can be just really kind of frustrating. Because actually, yeah, the the new Universe Survival arc is starting. In fact, I think it's actually airing right now as we're talking. So. Yes, in fact, we, it, it is 6.22 and we are 22 minutes into that new episode. I am super yeah. psyched. After this interview, I'm going to like wait half an hour for it to go up on Crunchyroll and then indulge. Please support the official release, everyone. Yes, look. <laughs> Guys, please support the official release. Like, we've got, I, we've got the guy who tells you to support the official release. Come on, do it. You know, I had some guy message us on on like email us asking if he could host like post our episodes and movies on his YouTube channel, and we told him no, you can't do that, absolutely not. And he's like, well, what about you guys in Toei? And I'm like, we re-edit everything. We revoice it, rewrite it, rescore it, and he just got so upset at us. And we're like, "No, you don't understand. You don't just take somebody's content and then repost it without doing any work. That's lame." See, I feel like someone's gonna say something about reaction channels at this point, but I mean, probably not gonna say it on this video because I do those videos, and people probably aren't gonna insult me to my face. But well, that's at the same complete. time, here's, here's the thing: my, um, my personal feeling on reaction videos, since I mean, th- which I feel like an appropriate place to talk about it. Um, they're fine. They're harmless because ultimately, when it comes down to it, nobody like nobody is going to come to the reaction video first. Nobody's going to come to the reaction video to watch our stuff. People are going to go to our stuff to watch it, and then the reaction video later. So I don't care if somebody is getting famous off reaction videos of our content. Why does that bug me? I I've got no I like as long as people are still watching our stuff and enjoying it. In the meantime, I don't care. I, I, I felt like uh, people getting upset about that. I, I, I always like, sure. Um, I, I can, I can understand some arguments from some people like, well, it's, it doesn't take much work at all. And I'm like, well, yeah. Okay. But I don't know. It doesn't bother me. I, I don't care. So I'm not, I'm not paying him to say this. Just so you guys know. No, like, honestly, <laughs> I know like, I'm not going to name names, but, like, there might be one or two people on the team who get frustrated at them. And I'm like, guys, it's cool. Calm down. It's chill. Like, I, I, have my, I have my own personal opinions on this stuff, and I don't care about reaction channels. Like, I, I, in fact, honestly, I go to yours to see your response because I always loved – I love making you laugh because you're so nice and friendly and you enjoy things. Like I'm you, not paying him to say this. Yeah, it's, trust me. I wouldn't take the money. <laughs> I, I go like I. The re- I reached out to her to do this interview because I liked her videos. I was like, oh, she actually really likes her stuff. I like to see what makes you laugh because what I really hate about people who critique stuff nowadays, 
nobody enjoys anything. Like, a lot of these people don't enjoy stuff. They sit down and they're like, okay, what terrible, like, how can I deconstruct it? What, how can I criticize it? And it's like, look, criticism is valid and necessary for everybody. But if you're just going to sit there and, like, look for things to not like, I don't know. That's just not me. I want to see people enjoy stuff. I want to see people having fun, spreading the love. So whenever I watch, like, you watch our stuff, even if there's something that I can tell that you're not enjoying, the stuff that you do enjoy, I'm like, ah, good, I made her laugh. I mean, like, analogy, that's kind of, like, that's kind of my almost philosophy, just just in general. Like, I review Super and, uh, like, Dragon Ball Super in the episodes, and a lot of people are, like, have gotten very cynical about about and being like, okay, no, but we have to hate Super. We've got to hate everything about it because it's all trash, and I'm like, yeah, but, I mean, I don't need to go around, don't necessarily need to go around on an angry rant about something, because not much really pisses me off, at least not in terms of random anime that I watch. It's not much that can really piss me off. There's, there's, there's some things, but not much. So it's like, uh, I, like I, I mean, I don't get me wrong. Like, obviously, you know, I, I'm friends with Zeon, and he does stuff like that as well. I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. I'm just saying, like, that's just personally a thing that... I just don't find enjoyment out of talking about why things are terrible and why you shouldn't like things and why you should feel bad for liking things. I mean, I do, again, I personally think that criticism is necessary for artists. Um, and if you if you feel like it's necessary to put your opinion about something out there, go ahead. But I, I just, I don't know. Again, I, I don't I don't see the necessity, and I like with a lot of people, just looking for the negative and everything. So I'm glad we're on the same page there. So I guess like, you know, just, I mean, final question, you've kind of sort of answered this, but like, just, just in terms of like, you know, what's like, like what's in store for your future, future of Team Four Star, what are you aiming to do? What's your goals for the next few years? Stuff like that. Goal for the next few years? Uh, well, definitely finishing the Cell Saga. That's a, that's a goal that we've actually set forward this year. Um, oh, that's, which, oh, it, yeah. fair enough. That makes sense. That makes sense by the amount of stuff you have to go through. Yeah, um, we're we're on the home stretch now, which is incredible. We're uh, episode fifty seven is currently scripted, uh, and we're looking to get f- episode fifty eight done as well. Um, right now, we're also in the middle of the cell versus videos, and those uh, are going yeah. Partic- yeah those are going over very well. I'm super happy. I, I just I just actually wanted to say I, I just how much I've been enjoying the fact that you guys have been doing that. Like I I really like it when you guys sort of expand the sort of DBZA lore in vertical commas and, and especially when it, like you're doing these things where like everyone is challenging cell. It's almost like making it the the hashtag cell games a really really big like event like a monumental event which I mean I personally enjoy because I actually really like the cell games as like a part of the series. So it's like and I'm sure a lot of other people also really enjoy some of the stuff there. So it's like. It's like now you're getting to that. You're almost like hyping it up with all these extra bonus content stuff. So it's like I've been really appreciating that. I'm glad. That was actually kind of a goal after. Like it wasn't the goal when we started doing them. But as we were making them, I'm like, you know what? This will actually really make this. You know, when it came to the Frieza saga, that wasn't any big event that we could do because it was all kind of this self-contained over the course of just like a couple days. Like it was, it was kind of interesting that we couldn't make that an event. But this... Oh no, the Cell Games right now, this is an event. Like, this is a, ma- like, the idea within the series is that he wants to make this something that the entire world is talking about. So we thought, you know, kind of play it off like a multi uh, like a m- multimedia big deal, you know. I, I don't know. You're, I, I, think, I think you've got the right idea. And we're happy that we can do that. Um, so yeah, the, the Cell Games videos have been a lot of fun to make. And we've got, let's see, three, so we have four more coming out, at least. Oh, wow. Um, there's, possi- okay. there's the possibility of, an, of, of a fifth, e- maybe even a sixth, but we're not banking on them. But at the very least, we have uh, four more coming out. Um, and uh, next week, uh, well, get prepared to go fast. Oh, shit. Yep. So looking forward to that. Uh, hope you guys do too. Uh, and as for the rest of the year and what's to come, hopefully original content. That is definitely what we're focusing on right now is original content. So let's see how that goes. Because you, you guys have been sort of saying you wanted to do original content for years. So, I, I mean, it, it's going to be really interesting to see that. I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it, obviously. Hope it's 
hope it's good. I, I, I hope... I'm assuming it'll be good, but... I, I'm hoping just as much as you're hoping that it'll be well-received, you know? <laughs> well, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm... I, it, it fills me with both excitement and anxiety at the same time. Well, I think, yeah, that's basically... Those are all my questions. So, anyway, um, thank you so much for coming, doing this interview with me. I really appreciate it. No, thank you very much. I was really glad... I'm really glad to be here. And honestly, again, you guys are, uh, like, you... Your videos, I've always really enjoyed them. And I'm glad that I was able to be an influence in your life, along with the rest of the team. And thank you for that. Oh, just, like, everything's full circle now. <laughs> Everything I, I am just validated for the rest of existence. This this is it's perfect. So obviously thank you. And also obviously everyone who is watching the um interview as well, thank you for getting to the end and you know, leave your comments, say if you want to say something, I don't know. Maybe, maybe I don't know, maybe if the, I've got more questions, maybe we'll do another one. I, I I've got no idea at this point. But Thank you this for joining us, everybody. Yeah, thank you for joining us. And see you all next time. Adios.